the cat gets luminous, here's your look at the DC collectible DC Artist Alley Show Morassi. This is the iridescent variant of Catwoman. Show Morassi is half Japanese and half Korean. She grew up in Europe and has been living in San Francisco, California for the past 10 plus years. This mix of cultures is a reflectant in her work, merging Asian, manga, and Western art influences with her personal dark twist. In her spare time, she works her personal art. Her artwork has been exhibited in the German Film Museum in Frankfurt and the Louisiana Modern Art Museum in Denmark, among other places. To get this review started, we're going to take the tape measure and put it to the very top of the Catwoman statue and stopping it right there. According to the tape measure, you're looking at a statue that stands 7.3 inches in height, which is rather actually surprising because when you look at it, it doesn't feel like it's that tall. Looking at it, it looks like it's almost a little bit smaller. But rest assured, according to the tape measure, you're looking at the statue 7.3. In centimeters, though, if centimeters is your thing, then you're looking at a statue of Catwoman standing 18.6 centimeters in height. If you manage to pick up the statue for yourself, coming included with that is the DC Artist Alley uh, card. You get two cards technically, even though the second one doesn't have any information on it other than DC Artist Alley down below. Now really represented here and depicted here on the card is the standard edition release. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second because there were several different variations, several different variants released for these statues along with many of the other DC Artist Alley pieces that have come out from DC Collectibles. Yes, if we move the statue to the side, bringing in the box that the statue came inside of, you can see the other variants that would have been available for the Shomarasi DC Artist Alley. Three statues in total. Those statues were Catwoman, Poison Ivy, and Harley Quinn, respectively. And if you were to get the standard release, what you would be treated to is colors of the whites, the blacks, and the reds. All three statues look exquisite here in those color palettes, but much like other Artist Alley releases, there were other variants and other colors available, and if you felt a little bit more festive with your lineup, you could also get the holiday variants, which would be the same exact statues, the Poison Ivy, the uh, Catwoman and the Harlequin, all here in greens, the whites and the reds. So there's a couple of different variations to choose from. The one that we're going to be looking at right now, the iridescent version, would be the rarer of the three. So getting a look at this statue, now this one is the limited release, iridescent. And what iridescent basically means is it's colors that seem to change when you look at them from different angles. It's not until you actually physically get it in hand or hoping that this review will give it true justice. When you look at it straight on, it looks more of a, a sheen of like a metallic purple. But then when you get certain angles tilted in a certain way, it almost comes across a little bit more on a silver end. You get some hints and maybe some distorted colors where at one, one second you might think you're seeing gold, other times you may be seeing green. Primarily, again, it's really one color, but it's an effective way of using the light around you to change the perspective of what color you think you're seeing. A lot of people are now starting to introduce uh, iridescent colors to cars because the neat thing about cars is the way they're moving and sunlight hitting them certain ways, it seems like the color does change. They often do that with purples and greens because those two colors seem to bounce off one another depending, again, the light source that you're looking at. Almost, even if my eyes are perhaps playing tricks on me, I feel like I'm actually seeing a little bit of the green mixed there with purple. Somewhat ironic, actually, that the Clown Prince of Crime would exhibit also those two colors, the greens and the purples. 
Uh, the statue is pretty much exactly the same. There's nothing that's been changed from this to the standard or the holiday released variants, other than the fact that they've used this glorious iridescent purple, gold, possibly even silver, but primarily the main color is seems to be a metallic purple. But you can really see how effective that is as I even rotate the statue around, how those colors seem to be playful and almost how your eyes start playing tricks on you. I'm starting to see some silver. I start seeing a little bit of gold. You might very well actually see something a little bit different when you are looking at the statue for yourself. I like the pose that they put her in. They've got the whip handle in the one hand and it's wrapped all the way around and it's looped off and formed off there around like the part of the lasso loop around her leg and it drapes off from there, drops down to the, the actual display stand. And as you can see, the foot is standing over top of that. I like that the statue doesn't have a lot of busyness to it, even like the base doesn't have some additional coloring to it. I think even the standard release had the black base, and I think the holiday colors had more almost like a, a cream color or gray base. Here, though, they've kept it primarily a black base. And we flip it upside down, you've got the DC collectibles. In this case, it is an artist proof AP06. AP06 out of the 800 release. Again, it's going to be of a very limited quantity that is circulating around comic book stores. I really do like Catwoman's face. It does get a little lost because you're using only really one color to translate all the sculpt to whoever's looking at the statue. You can still make out the face though it is a little more on the harder side. It actually does look like it's made out of a gemstone or kind of carved out from stone it definitely gov definitely gives me more of the vibe of a of a like a carved statue rather than something that's been produced in a factory I like, again i like the face sculpt it's a little harder to make out i don't know there is what seems to be hair it could actually be an imperfection with the top of her forehead here kind of does give it a slight look of her hair i think it is actually her hair it's a little harder, like I said, to make it out because it's only really one color, or is it? Even like looking at her face, it looks like the face is a different color from the rest of her cowl, and yet her ears, from me looking at it, the ears, the internal, the inner sections of the ears look like it's the same color as her face. As you tilt it again slightly to the side, you can see a little bit more of the greens, a little bit more of the silvers. Take my word for it, as you get this in your hand, you're really going to start playing, your eyes are going to start playing tricks with you, thinking that's one color instead of another. Love the stance of her, like I said. I like the fact that the whip is wrapped around her. It is made up of a wire. In theory, you could bend this. I don't know how much give this wire is going to be. The last thing, also, the way it's connected to the handle. You don't want to get too aggressive, best word I could probably describe it too aggressive with bending the whip because I really don't want that to separate away from the handle. But again, I guess you could manipulate it if you feel like this isn't the best way to go. Wiring is always really tricky anyways because if you're bending it too much, you're gonna start seeing very obvious sharp corners to it and the whip wouldn't have a natural uh, you know, curvature to it. Love the sculpt to it. Like I said, it's a fairly small statue, but where its size sort of I don't want to say disappoints the statue because it's something that's good for a shelf or a desk, for example. The neat thing about this particular statue, if you did manage to pick up any of the DC Artist Alley from Shomarasi, is the fact that this one does have the iridescent light or the iridescent paintwork to it. It stands out, so even if you had the other variants in your collection, this one would look very, very different from the other ones unlike the standard release of the DC artist Alley Catwoman, which is pretty much available now in brick and mortar comic book stores. In fact, you probably could even find them right now at your local comic book store. The iridescent variant, however, is a BAM Books A Million exclusive, meaning that your best bet, and I don't think there's a brick and mortar store BAM Books A Million, you could find it online, or your better bet is check eBay, and providing you can find this one at a good price, I think it's worth picking up. It doesn't have as much the paint that the standard release has, or even the holiday variant has, but what it does have going for it is it looks like it's actually a gem statue. 
something of which you could even imagine Catwoman herself wanting to steal during one of her midnight heists. There's a charm to that, and for the fact that it's also using iridescent paint, also means depending on which way you've got the light hitting at it, and depending on which angle you're looking at the statue, the colors could change from one second to the next. Like I said, again, this one is a BAM Books A Million exclusive, so good luck and happy hunting. Today we were having a look though at the DC Collectibles DC Artist Alley. This was the iridescent variant of the Shomarasi Catwoman statue. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other DC Collectibles statue reviews, there's a playlist just for that if you're also new to this channel and haven't yet hit that little subscribe button down below. Shame, shame, shame. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Make sure you hit that little subscribe button. It's located just below this video. And then that way, when new videos are coming to this channel, hopefully you'll be able to be the within the know. If you still feel like you're not in the know when new videos are coming to this channel, your best bet, swing on over to the homepage by clicking the name of this channel just below this video. Hit the review spot. It'll take you over to the main page and check out the video section. It's your 100% guarantee that if something has been posted, you won't miss out on it. And that's one of the biggest problems right now that YouTube is facing or content creators are facing on YouTube is sometimes the viewers aren't always aware when new videos are coming onto this channel. It's sort of somewhat ironically defeating the purpose, but your best bet is to guarantee that you haven't missed out on anything is checking out the video section in the home page. More videos will be coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting down below. By the way, what do you think of this statue? Always like reading your comments in the comments section down below. And I'll see you guys next time.